want to say that over the, since we started this uh, last November, we've learned a lot. But our greatest learning has been how far we have to go. The truth of the matter is, of 47 million African Americans in the United States, most of us have not even heard of the Every Student Succeeds Act. That's the reality. We're going to change that reality over the next three years by raising public awareness about the Every Student Succeeds Act. And our job, our responsibility, is not only for tonight, but to start with tonight to engage parents to learn more what they could be doing in their local school district to make sure that every child in black America, every child in America, gets a high quality education. That's why we're here. Thank you so much. And uh, when the children, as you said, came to me, I had third grade, and I wondered why, what was happening that these children would get to third grade and they were at a level two and three grade levels below. And I just couldn't understand if they were getting this education in kindergarten and first grade, why do you come to third grade and you still can't? Mm -hmm. And then children were being diagnosed for special education. And if you couldn't sit in your seat, you had to take this medication. My son, a victim of that, who could not stay in his seat because he's very much like his mother, um, so he needs to be on Redland. Well, no, we do not need to be on that. Mm -hmm. So then I turned my career to become a special educator. And to, my thesis was then on what happens to children who are, whose mothers are on drugs. And you find out they come, to, they come, they're born already with some issues that they need to correct. But these are th correctable things. Sitting in IEP meetings with parents, I become the advocate, and parents are, are they're sitting around a table and they're being told these things about their children. So you do advocate for, um, for children and parents as I did in special education because I don't think that all of our children are special in the fact that they need a different kind of learning. They just need some special help. Whatever, iron sharpens iron. So if we allow you to figure out what your child's strengths are, we figure out if he can comprehend where is he leading at. The average child in the DMV, and I'm saying that on purpose, Explain the DMV for DC, the Maryland, and Virginia, that is in the inner city, that is below poverty, which is about 18,000 a year of the family's home income, reads at a third grade level and does not get past that level by the time they are graduating from high school. So you now have a person, a child, an adult, who is trying to function and he cannot, she cannot even fill out her job employment application. So what I do is I come into the homes, I come into the communities, I go into the prescribing level, and then I make sure that our children are not being over-medicated, misdiagnosed, and not being able to succeed. I do think it's important to understand when we're talking about ESSA, that the role that the assessment and the test is supposed to play, you know? And what it's supposed to do is make it clear to show where there are inequities in an education system on a statewide basis. So what this means is that, um, I'm from Maryland, um, that when I have um, students who might be in Baltimore City or Baltimore County taking the same test that folks are taking, and it's only one per year, you know, taking the same test um, in Howard County and Charles County, when we see there's a real disparity and gap, then we are either shine in the light and say, you must do something. So this is where I'm talking about where I think that how we use this and how we can use it to our advantage is important. A lot of the tests that we talk about come from then the state level, then the district level, and then the school level. And so understanding how the different levels of testing works and not um, and, and having that kind of clarity so that when we speak as a community, we know mm -hmm. what we're speaking about and who we need to speak to becomes really important. The federal government is demanding that you take one test a year, but districts add on top of that all kinds of other right. tests for different uh, purposes, and nobody ever tells parents this is for summative uh, reasons, this is for formative right. reasons, this is for summation reasons. We don't even have that uh, jargon where we're just parents trying to interact with the district. What I tell parents to do is most states publish practice tests, and I think every parent should go look at them, read them, and then ask yourself one question. Should my child be able to know these things? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, then that's your answer about what you think about testing. If the answer is no, then you should raise your voice with your state. Mm -hmm. 
you should become, because there is nothing, when I was an elected official, there was nothing, I think, more fearful to us than informed parents, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when you say we're not walking in our power, I, I, I think parents themselves just need information to walk in their power. When it comes to testing, there's just two things I'll leave you with. The first one is that, go look at the test for yourself, make your own decision about whether your kids should be able to do it. And the second is to just to remember, when we start talking about taking away tests, I get really nervous just in that you can't erase the achievement gap by erasing the data that it exists. And I'm, a, I'm fearful that the education establishment is trying to do that.